Listen up, Texans. The month of August sure is hot, but it also means beautiful, calm weather. And I know talking to our guides that the fishing in the Gulf right now is great at the jetties for reds, the Dorado are behind the shrimp boats, and lots of bait balls out deep. If you like to fish early for bass, the top water action is good early in the morning. Let's get ready to go fishing here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. This is Captain Rick Murphy and I'm Bree Gabrielle here to bring you yes. another week of outstanding fishing reports from around the state. And Rick, it's officially August, like you said, which means the summer season end is near, schools will start back up again, but the fishing continues to be hot along with the temperatures. You're absolutely right, Bree, and the whole key right now is when it's calm, Go early, come back early. Have a lunch. Because you gotta remember, it's no different than when you wanna, ha when you gotta mow the grass, guess what? You wanna do it early because you certainly don't feel like eating a burger after you cut that grass and you're all hot. And the same thing applies to the fish. Exactly, you took the words right out of my mouth. All right, <laughs> sure <I did. laughs> let's take a look over at the CCA workbench and get a sneak peek of what Dave Farrell will be chatting with us about in his fancy new blue water gear. Yeah, we're talking about gaff and fish and you don't wanna do that. Dang sure don't wanna swing at him like that. You don't want to be a lumberjack, but we're going to have uh, 10 tips or so on how to gaff fish. Well, I think of all kinds. Neat. You could always show me on that cameraman there. Dave. Oh, yeah, please do. Please do. Yeah. We love that cameraman. Okay, well, if stripers and bass sound like something you want to get into this first weekend of August in the Yeti Upper Fresh region, then let's listen up to Johnny Geis with Lake Fork and Tawakany News. Give us a good start and some tips on how to beat the heat, Johnny. We'll do it. Hello, Rick and Bree. How are y'all tonight? We're doing We're great. So good. What are you doing, Johnny? Giving us that report. Sounds like you almost stole my report there, Rick. Boy, Lake Fork is feeling hot right now. It's about a 105 degree heat wave out there right now. Whoa. But the numbers are still down a little bit, but the size is still good on Lake Fork because we're on that kind of fishery here. Last week, we had a kind of an unusual cold front come through for late July, and it dropped the water a little bit, and then, boy, it just turned the fish upside down. They've been sporadic. One day, they're going to bite pretty good, and we're going to catch them. Next day, it's a super tough bite, and you think we need to drain the lake. Anyway, we're seeing a lot of bass on my Garmin live scope. They're just not feeding every day. My uh, best bite continues to be out deep on the main lake structure but you gotta hit them at the right time to catch them. And here lately, that has been late in the afternoon when everybody's leaving the lake, that's about the time to be going out. August down here is usually a tough month on Lake Fork. That heat will a little set in and make it hard to stay out all day. Just like you mentioned a while ago, we gotta get up early, be there at the crack of dawn, uh, get in some good fishing until about seven or eight o'clock on top water bait little shallow bite and then maybe a little bit out deep and then you might as well head in, go back out around five o'clock or later for an a afternoon bite, that's the day. The bass on fork seem to be feeling better in August, uh, about 5 p.m. on into dusk and maybe on the end of the night. So some anglers over here, they're, they're switching over to night fishing about this time. Uh, you can catch some big ones under the docks with the green lights. We probably got over 200 docks on this lake that have the green lights on the bottom shining up and it's just covered up in bait fish and, and big bass too. Uh, big worms and jigs are good for the big bass lures for night fishing. Don't forget the sunscreen in the daytime and for sure don't forget that bug spray at night when you get out there. Hey, on uh, last week we finished up the Lake Forks Camp Bass. It just wrapped up and everyone involved had a blast. Uh, big bass were caught, numerous personal bass were caught as well. Former Texas Insider Fish Report uh, Freshwater reporter Rick Carter again did an outstanding job in coordinating and lining up professional guys to accommodate all the kids from there from 11 to 18 years of age that attended this event. Uh, Rick and uh, founder Danny Go says it's the 11th year of Camp Bass that started back in 2008. The goal of this camp down here is a bunch of kids to uh, help them develop future leadership in that fishing industry in hopes that one day they'll give back to the youth when they get big. Uh, the selected youth from all over the nation, they come together to fish on the premier largemouth trophy lake here at Fork. And not only do they get to fish with Lake Fork, but they also get to do it with professional fishing guides we have on this lake. Uh, these guys uh, donate their time and skills to teach these junior anglers and they had a blast. So in addition to that hands-on bass fishing each day, they, they took a 
tour to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Hatchery in Athens. It's right down the road if you get out this way. They learned how to build some rods over at Real Time Rod. They took a tour of Lake Fork Tackle and they received instructional tips and use of electronics and many aspects of fishing from the guide. So, lodging was provided by Lake Fork Marine and food was by Tiffany's Restaurant and the banquet hall of the church by Lake Fork Baptist Church. So each year the kid who catches the largest bass is awarded a bass replica amount. Uh, uh, this winter was Wyatt Cook from Point, Texas. Had a big bass over nine pounds while fishing again with the one and only Rick Carter. So here's a picture of Wyatt's fish. That is a nice nine pound plus bass out of Lake Fork. All right, good to go, see that buddy. Rick's doing well and uh, way to go Wyatt, good job man. Yeah, Wyatt had not caught a fish all week and he needed to catch one, so Rick said put him with him and man, he went out and got the job done. The other picture I got for you is a picture of my sister Mary Jo Gray. Her and her husband caught 16 bass in an hour after five o'clock on Friday evening. So they're there, if you're coming out this weekend, hit it that time you'll catch this size fish. Tell me about oh, the this, hybrids. Yeah, let's go on over to hybrids. Twockney hybrid bass, man, that bite's great. Hard fighting fish are biting early. Twockney guy, Joe Reed, putting his customers on easy limits. Usually by 7.30 in the morning, they've got their five hybrids per person. Joe's reporting the surface of hybrids and sand bass early almost every morning. Joe's catching most of the hybrids on swimming heavy slab through the surface and hybrids and usually doesn't take long for his party limit out. They then continue to catch and release the hybrids and usually switch over to jigging slab off the bottom and going to live shad. So once Joe's customers have a limit of hybrids, he starts looking for the surface and sand bass and they catch a bunch of them also. So. Joe, Joe Reed cleans all the fish, and man, he's got a bunch of them to clean. They, the customer leaves home with a smile on her face and many bags of tasty fillets. So look up old Joe Reed Fishing Guide on Lake Tawakney, book a trip, and you'll have a great time. He's a great guy and knows how to find and catch the big ones on Tawakney. Just look at these pictures and you can tell. That's a lot of fish to clean, and that's a big, nice, pretty hybrid. Boy, you're not kidding. You got anything else for us, or are we done, bud? All I want to end up with, it's that summertime and you got to wear the right clothing out on the water. Get those long sleeve shirts on, some kind of head cover hoodie. Don't forget the sunscreen. And by all means, start drinking water early and keep after it. Watch out for those heat strokes. Right. That's some good advice from our guide from the Upper Fresh region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from his region. He says, Lake Fork, the cooler weather is keeping some of the bass shallow. Early morning bite in the shallows and then drop shots and shaky heads producing out deep. And then Lake Tawakany, the hybrid stripers are biting great. So use top waters and slabs wherever you see those birds, right? Numbers Pete? and size. I'm liking it. I I'm liking like it, it too. Sounds like a fun time on the water. All right, in the fish bites upper coast region, we've got redfish, we've got trout, we've got kingfish, and we've got ling. So if any of those sound enticing, then let's listen to our Captain Carl. Weston on the line to give us a good talking to. Hey, Carl. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Pretty good. Good job. Pretty good. Well, Pretty good. the fishing is getting hot down here. It's staying hot. It's getting calm. Um, uh, going over trout, the trout have been forming on various reefs over in Galveston Bay between markers 49 and 63. This general area is loaded with various oyster and artificial reefs, and there are also other natural reefs in this area including Redfish Island. There have been travel on all these reefs right now, and they will be there for quite some time. Being that the wind has come down a little bit, and we're getting some good weather windows to get out there and fish, uh, most of the guys are fishing right now. They're dragging live croaker, but there's also been some really good catches and good action, you know, in the bass and fast and soft plastic, like the mirror lure provoker on a quarter or three eighths ounce jig head, depending on the current. So right now, uh, in the channel, there's a lot of tide. These fish have not been eaten when the tide is smoking, so your best chance is when the tide slacks off during a tide change. Just play that tide to your advantage, you'll find them. And there are a lot of fish out there right now. Um, right here, we have a picture of Brandon with a nice trout. That is nice. All right, let's talk about some redfish, Bub. Okay, the redfish, uh, there have been a lot of big uh, open water schools of redfish in Sabine Lake. Those fish are on fire right now. Um, there's several different schools in Sabine right now, as well as Galveston Bay. Most of these schools are gonna be on the western shoreline towards the middle of the lake, uh, which is a pretty good ways out. Uh, you'll see I'm blowing up on ribbon fish and pogies right now. 
So just chase down the slicks, get in front of them, and wait for the fish to come to you on top. Um, they'll, they'll pretty much eat anything right now you throw in front of their face, but uh, bigger baits like an inch and a, inch, uh, uh, a one and a half ounce spoon or a bass assassin swim bait on a one ounce jig head is going to give you a better chance. Uh, you're cast a lot further out in front of these schools. Most of these fish are oversized in the school right now, but there are still some slots in there. And right now it seems to be there's more slot fish in Sabine than in Galveston Bay in the open water schools. But, uh, and here's a picture of, of a nice redfish. Oh, that's pretty. that pretty gold one, man. <laughs> those are those tournament winners we used to go after in August, Bree, when we were fishing the Redfish Cup. Just want you to have a fact there. Let's go offshore, Carl. All right, guys, uh, the kingfish bite is on fire right now. From Sabine all the way down to Freeport, we're seeing nice catches of fish on both near shore and offshore spots. The shrimp boats have had a lot of fish on them too. Uh, slow trolling, artificial bump trolling live or dead bait over bottom structure has been my preferred method lately. I use a kingfish rig that consists of a nose hook and a 4X treble hook on a wire leader. Now the space between the nose hook and the trailer depends on the bait size usually. Uh, six inches is preferred. Uh, generally that's a good length for most live or dead baits like cigar minnows or shads. Uh, medium sized blue runners and hardtail, this size will work on as well. Um, and you can buy these rigs pre made at most tackle shops in the area. So, uh, and just remember when you're handling these kingfish, use a, use a long handle de hooker or pliers because their teeth really are no joke. And uh, we have a picture of, of myself and Mr. Nick with a kingfish from Saturday. That's a nice fish. All right, what else you got for me offshore? So staying offshore, uh, the Ling Cobia bite has been heating up this month as well. We've been catching these fish over structure while targeting snapper. It's a good idea to keep a pitch rod handy with about two foot of fluorocarbon tied directly to the hook. Uh, Ling seem to be coming right to the boat. And um, you know, when you least expect it, so stay ready. Keep your rod set up for just that occasion. Um, you know, Ling will eat most any bait when they're hungry. But as you know, they can be picky as heck when they are not hungry and will drive most anglers crazy trying to get them to, to bite. Uh, when these fish get picky, throw the rules out the window, guys. Try anything, try something off the wall. You know, the list of things I've seen these fish eat will make you laugh, so don't, drop, don't stop trying until you get them hooked up. Um, but uh, one thing we always, we've done lately is um, we've tried some of the new fish bites products we had in those strip baits tipped on a jig head and that has been working really well so uh try that try try anything and um here's here's a fellow we both know bill with a nice 60 pound ling he caught two days ago dang that Whoa. looks like some good sushi all right bud thank you so much great report from the fish bites upper coast region but it's time for the mirror lure hot spots from the upper coast region he says inshore trout they are in a variety of uh, reefs off of the Houston Ship Channel between marker 49 and 63. You want to throw a live croaker or a bass assassin soft plastic or a mirror lure provoker on a quarter to three eighths ounce jig head. And then offshore, kingfish over the bottom structure, slow trolling artificial baits or bump trolling live or dead baits with kingfish rigged on a wire leader reef. That was various reefs for all you English speaking folks out there. Various Rick. reefs. Various. A variety. Right. I got you. I got you. That's why I'm here, right? Of course. Right. Okay. All right. Hang tight, Texans. We're checking out the Garmin work. Lower Coast region next on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. But, Rick, you know what I want to check out? What do you want to check out? What kind of shenanigans Dave Farrell's getting into at the He's TCA always Word Fetch? In trouble He's over there. always in trouble. What are you going to do now, Dave? <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about gaffing fish because although catching fish is fun, Gaffin fish is a lot more fun. A lot I more thought fun. you were going to use fun. a lot funner. 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 I did too. More All funner. Right, we'll be back more with funner. more funner and fun things. That's it. Oh my, <laughs> people are dying over that. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Garmin. Join the club. Sportsman's Adventures. Fishing for adventure and CCA Texas, a leader in marine conservation. Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 offshore four strokes. 
For those that like their V6 lighter, faster, and stronger, setting new standards for power, efficiency, speed, and lightweight, built for the rigors of offshore boating, packed with Yamaha's legendary reliability. And now Yamaha's 4.2 liter V6 four strokes offer a choice between digital or mechanical controls to match your rigging preference. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Are you tired of fighting foul odors in your car? The easy to use auto odor eliminator from Starbright uses the power of chlorine dioxide to eliminate even the worst smells. From cigarettes and pets to fast food and sweaty kids, this EPA registered chlorine dioxide technology fights the odor causing bacteria, the source of the stink. Don't just cover it up, eliminate it with the auto odor eliminator from Starbright. If you're not a member of Coastal Conservation Association, you need to be. CCA fights on a national and state level for our fishing rights so that our children and grandchildren will have fish to catch today and in the future. CCA through their habitat programs create oyster and artificial reefs as well as many other habitat programs. CCA also each year releases millions of trout, redfish and flounder, so join myself, Bree and Dave and become a member of CCA now. Well, Dave, we're here at the CCA workbench, and you know what? I'm really excited about this segment. We've done this in the past yeah. on the Florida show, and you know, it's a very- Might even have done it on this one before. It's a very <laughs> educational, no, but it's yeah, really yeah. important. You yeah, know, you never, so many fish are lost at the boat side. It's right the most important part, and like I said a minute ago, it's the, fun, it's the most fun part of doing the whole thing, in my opinion, but you know, for once, we're gonna, I'm going to try to go through 10 things real quick. One is you always want to wear a pair of gloves. doesn't matter if you're using what kind of mono or wire. You need to have a pair of gloves, and you need to be kind of matched to the type of leader that you're using. A pair of snot gloves, you can probably go up to about 100 and 150 pound leader. Uh, these kind of gloves here are little waterman gloves kind of thing. You can probably maybe go up to 200 pound. But if you're going to go over 200 pound, you're going to need some really good heavy duty wireman's gloves that you can break 200 pound with, you know, by sitting down right. if you have to. But always wear gloves all the time. Don't don't try to do it without it because you'll cut your hand. If you cut your hand, then we got to go home. Right. You know, I, I, I don't want to go home. Uh, a gaff, the gap in your gaff when you're with the, when you're trying to choose a gaff for a fish, you want to try to match the gaff's gap to the size of the fish. You know, you can get away with lashing like a number 10 hook to a, a nice piece of bamboo, and you can use that as a long pole gaff for most fish up to about 25, 30 pounds. But once you start going over that, you're going to need a good bite, you know, a good three inch bite and something with a little is more substantial that you can lift a heavier fish with. So, you know, keep that in mind. And if you're going after Marlin, you know, the best thing to do is to use a big flying gaff, a gaff with a detachable head that has a rope on it that you can secure to your fighting chair. If you don't have a fighting chair, don't gaff a blue Marlin. That's my, <laughs> that's my thing. So anyway. Okay. Um, it's, I, I think it's funny because I know if you, you shouldn't be gaffing a fish without a chair because anyway, try to, uh, try to, says, try to hit this. Says the blue Marlin guy <laughs> try, who never had to gaff anything with a straight yeah, gaff. Yeah, exactly. That's what fly fish. You always have it. Try to hit the fish in the head, no matter what kind of fish you've got, uh, a dolphin or a wahoo or whatever you're gaffing that you're going to, you plan on keeping. Gaff them in the head. It kills them real fast. Usually it stuns them so that they're not flopping around on the gaff a lot. Not only that, you've got the teeth going the right way. You got the teeth pointed towards the sky. So once you get them up in the boat and you got the teeth pointed toward the sky, they can go right into the box. If, the, if you gaff the fish near the tail, his teeth are pointing down and he can wiggle really hard. And if he comes off that gaff and those teeth are pointing to your feet, those teeth can do terrible damage to your feet or your lower legs. So always hit them in the head. Don't be a lumberjack. You know, if you have a decent uh, sharp gaff, you don't have to swing a gaff. All you got to do is get it out over his head and just a gentle pull. Exactly. You know, you just, put just a it gentle pull. And put it beyond him and get just on the other side. Get Put it behind like this. Right. And then 
boom. Right, and you, and the, the, that gap thing I was talking about, that can happen if you're trying to gaff a, a kingfish or a slender-bodied right. fish like a wahoo, and you don't, and you have too big of a gap, you can actually go all the way around the fish and never even hit him, lift him up out of the water, and then he falls off. So that's another reason why you want that gap. Um, keep, when you're gaffing a dolphin fish, keep the dolphin's head in the water when you got him on the leader. Because if when you're trying to gaff that fish and the wireman lifts the dolphin's head out of the water, he's gonna wanna jump. Yep. Same way with a billfish. We wanna try to keep him calm and steady. Now for a tuna fish, it's just the opposite. We wanna get to the point where we can lift his head out of the water. Because if we can lift his head out of the water, he's gonna die quick. Um, if he gets his head down, he can really power out of the gaff, gaff and shot. And that's a fish there that's really important to have a big gap. Correct. Because uh, he's a round, big run by Correct. the fish. Um, always, you know, uh, gaff. If, try to get the fish on one side of the boat or the other. We don't want to be backing straight down on the fish and try to get a gaff shot because you've got a narrow target at his back and you're trying to get come in from the side. So even if you do get a good shot, he may come off right. again yeah. with it, when he powers hit again. It, we want him to be, yeah, we want him to be on a corner, one's corner or the other, moving with the boat, you know, and that's what, that's how we want him. Uh, if you're using a wind-on, your wind-ons really help because you can actually use one hand to just feed the, feed the, the man who's in, on the rod and reel and use your other hand to gaff the fish. And you can just slide the gaff straight down the top of that leader until it gets right close to his eyeballs and then just pull up and then let go of the leader and go right into the box in one smooth motion. Always bring the gaff under the leader. Well, correct. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, go, Bree, before he decides to talk again. I know, right? Gaffing 101, here we go. All right, listen up, anglers. We've got some species changes in the Garmin Lower Coast region. So, Captain Kinney, sharing is caring. Let's hear it. I'll tell you what, the forecast this weekend looks incredible. It's really, really nice. Um, they're calling like one to twos out deep. And we got the Texas International Fishing Tournament, which we got boats coming from all over the whole Gulf Coast, uh, Florida, Louisiana, all over. We'll be fishing it also, so Bay and and inshore there but starting out with the inshore here flounder fishing which we're going to talk about a little bit it's getting better i'm seeing more of them getting weighed in brought here to our store and stuff like that with the calmer winds and tidal movements have a lot to do that also and what you got to do on these retargeting them i got guys all the time like hey you got a flounder hole or this and that yes we might but you got to be very very patient target these fish you know try the land cut or the east cut along the drop-offs and the guts there look for small bait movement or shimmering bait if you're going along kind of putting along or if your power pole down and the gut working it and you see little shiners kind of shimmering around uh, the edge of it or, or grass line there's probably some flying underneath you know push them up there throw up a, a one a quarter ounce to a three quarter ounce jig head and i've been using a scented fight club bait this is stuff made by fish bites and they got little paddle tails and they got a bunch of different one curly tails but they're working really good the main thing is you got work if you got a little 10 foot gut you're working and you catch two three times you'll move the next one you haven't covered anything so you got to work that gut over and over and over with the slow retrieve bump it off the bottom real slow and when you get that flounder bite you're going to feel it's going to feel like a big old trout thump you know it's going to do a big solid thump when he hits it give him a second or two give it to him a little bit if you need to and then go ahead and set it really good hook him up and you'll get him in slide him have a dip net and stuff like that really works well if you're on your boat been doing a bunch of working those guts like i said land cut east cut Power pull down with your double poles, work those drop offs, pitch right into it, pitch around the mangroves and everything else, working really hard. Go ahead and repeat that. Got a picture of a nice uh, flounder here from Louisa Morris, I think. So, moving over to the redfish, they're holding on the lower coast jetty still um, with calmer weather and stuff like that, and also along the deeper waters coming into our base systems. Live croakers working well, live finger mullets working really good, freeline these things still on the Carolina rig works really good. Make sure you get this fish time to eat in this stuff. They usually like to eat it head first and stuff like that. So easiest tip I can give you guys is keep the rod tip up in the air pretty much or like at 45 once you feel the bite, slowly bend to them so you get that line, get one solid hook set, and then keep your line taunt, of course. But there's been plenty of slot reds in that 20 to 28 inch rate range. And then there's also been some oversized redfish. And we got a picture of a young man here. He came up to the dock and he has personal big uh, bull redfish. So I figured put it on here for the show. And then moving to the good stuff, the offshore, been seeing a, a few more Dorado being caught out there. I've been using a lot of Islander lures, rigged with a ballyhoo, and I've been putting these on the flats and the riggers. And I'm actually pulling the same thing off the center rigger. I've just been adding a teaser bird to it. But look for any floating debris or, of course, rips out there. 
I've been trolling these baits at about seven and a half to eight knots. Um, you can also try the deeper shrimp boats out there. But if you're really targeting them to Dorado, I'd probably stay away from the shrimp boats because you might run into Bonita, you know, sharks, Jack the Bell, Black Pantina. So work some deeper structure or find a rip on stay that and you'll have a lot better luck uh, catching that. And also like you guys are talking about Dave and everybody, wait for the gaff shot on these things. You gotta have a good gaff shot. They're soft and stuff like that and do size your gaff to it. If you got a big Dorado coming up, hit him in the head, do one straight shot straight into the Eddie cooler. I have a 350 Tundra. We have one guy holding the lid, one guy gaffing, the other guy fighting. Put it in the box, close it, and you're done. So I got a picture of a good uh, Dorado here. My daughter caught this this past weekend. All oh, right. nice. Look how happy she is. Good job, Dad. Yeah. She's happy because <laughs> she got dolphin fingers she, when she get home. Oh, she, Lucky girl. Yeah, she, yeah she, was, she was happy to go get fresh food to go home with at college. So not, not the big numbers on billfish. There's not a ton of big numbers, but there's been some good stuff out there. Uh, guys were catching some sails, uh, white marlin, blue marlin, and they've been out a little bit deeper, around 100 fathoms at Jim's Peak, Weiss's Dome area around there. Main thing is you utilize your instruments. I, I've got a great garment on there, so you can utilize that by watching your temperature, temperature breaks, and also definitely look for your bait balls. I've always talked about this stuff, but look at your bait balls. Once you find that area in the bait balls, stay on them and work it hard. Don't make two passes like you're on an oil rig and there's nothing there move off. These fish are working those bait balls on her. She got to keep on them on top and sooner or later you can get them to eat. Try some mid-range lures. They've been working really well, but like this past weekend I had some mid-range out there and I put a bunch of stuff with Islanders rigged up with two to four pound mono and probably 80 to 9% of our strikes were all coming on those Islanders rigged with that ballet hue. So definitely get that there and it's working better. Like I said, TIFF tournaments this coming weekend. I'll be down there at South Padre. So good luck to all the bay anglers and offshore anglers. And I got a picture of a sail which we just released here. All right. Pretty. Thank you, Chad. Good luck. We'll be rooting for you. We'll light our fish candles, which brings good luck and lots of big fish. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the lower coast region. He says, inshore, flounder. The fish have packed up and uh, up along the lower coast, and they also are in the land cut and the east cut along the drop-offs. The jetties and the deeper water are holding some slot redfish and oversized fish. And then offshore, Dorado. They've been out deeper by the shrimp boats and the rips and 150 to 400 feet of water. The billfish are on the bait balls out deep in Jim's Peak and Noosa's Dome. This is me holding my fish candle. That's praying you. Praying to the fish gods. That's, <laughs> That's me. It. That's you me. Gotta bring it in money. I am. All right. Speaking of money, now's your chance to fish a big money tournament without huge entry fees. The Los Cabos Big Game Charter Boat Classic is the only tournament in the world that puts over $40,000 in cash plus prizes with no entry fees whatsoever. All visitors to Los Cabos have to do is enter a charter boat from the Los Cabos fleet during the four-day event, which runs from November 19th through the 22nd, and fill out your registration form online. It's the only free angler entry tournament in Los Cabos, and you can choose to fish only one day or all four. It's entirely up to you. November is the perfect time to visit the Los Cabos area. The weather is spectacular with mild day temperatures, calm seas, and an incredible game fish bite. World renowned for the large game fish swimming just offshore, the Los Cabos area boasts some of the largest tuna, dolphin, and wahoo in the IGFA record books. There's no other tournament in the world quite like the Los Cabos Big Game Charter Boat Classic, and there's no better time than now to visit loscabostournaments.com and register to fish in the special no entry fee Big Game Tournament. Well, how about that? That All sounds right. like fun. I think that's Every week, we should go I say do. we need to sign up. All right, we're going to take a <laughs> quick break and get ready for our Prospect Lure Fresh and Middle Coast regions. But before we go, we want to remind you that if you would like to catch up with our crew and everything fishing in Texas, make sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us on YouTube, and check us out on Instagram. We'll be right back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. CCA Star, fishing fun for giant prizes and scholarships. And Proshek Smokehouse, a link above. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore.
as close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Today's power pole tip of the week is about the new and improved bracket for the eight foot blade. Now the 10 foot blade has always had this heavy duty bracket and it's because it's been so well received that we've decided now for 2019 to change the bracket on the eight foot blade. So we have this heavy duty bracket now as part of your eight foot blade. The reason why I really like this is because it comes with all these plastic covers. So it encompasses all of your hydraulic hoses, but more importantly, in fishing situations, there's a lot of things back here on the boat that you could potentially lose a fish on, whether it's a trim tab or a prop. But guess what? Power Pole has done their job to make sure that there's nothing there for your line to get hung up on and potentially lose your fish. So if you're thinking about getting a new set of poles or upgrading your poles, think about the new eight foot blade. It has all those sleek designs and comes in a variety of different colors. And that's today's Power Pole Tip of the Week. Sleek designs, huh? Slick designs. Power Pole's got it. All right, well, if you've got some Proshek smoked meat handy, now would be the time to take it out and snack on it and listen up to Matt Reed in our Proshek Smokehouse Lower Fresh region. we don't have any. I don't know. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> With some important info you're going to want to hear on Lake Decker, Fayette County, Travis, Amistad, and Falcon. Let's hear it, Matt. All right, let's get this thing started. Uh, going to kick it off talking about largemouth bass. Uh, Going to start off there in that, that Austin area. We've got Lake Decker. It's slowed down a bit lately, but it's still catching some nice fish. Uh, catching most of them on a four-inch uh, Cinco-style bait or a small shed, you know, swim bait. Uh, they're still in there around that, that outlet, so just let it fall down in them when you see them. Uh, also, you can catch them on the edges of the grass lines doing the same thing. Uh, out deep, to catch some on a crankbait and a flutter spoon. Uh, that's what you need to do later in the day. Fayette County still producing quality fish. Uh, catch a bunch of them after really shallow grass early in the morning. Uh, throw a soft plastic stick bait and work it extremely slow. Uh, Brian Cotter and the customers actually sat in one spot a couple of days ago and caught 37 right in one spot without moving the boat in two or three foot of water. So that's been really productive lately. Uh, there's also some deep fish out in that 15 to 25 foot of water. You can Catch those on a shaky head or deep crankbaits. Uh, there's some big schools out there. Lake Travis, uh, producing some real nice quality lately, throwing the top water uh, at the mouths of the creeks and, you know, in the back of the deep coves with docks. Uh, try throwing it in the shade behind the docks and along the deep walls. Um, <clears throat> you want to do that? You might throw that top water all day right now. Uh, there's been lots of wolf packs of fish just cruising up and down the shores in the back of those deeper pockets. Uh, that's been the best way to catch them over there. Like Amistad down at Del Rio, got three main things going on in that shallow water. In the one to ten foot range or around the grass, you got mixed grasses of hydrilla pond weed and, and then just all kinds of other stuff. Uh, you catch them on top water on a you know, walking bait, on a spook type bait. Also can catch them on frogs or chatter bait. Uh, if you want to slow down, pick up a Texas rig or a wacky worm in that shallow water, and, and you can catch a whole lot of fish at Amistad right now. Uh, Hydrilla is really growing well as, it, as the water warms. In that 10 to 20 foot range, you've got a lot of Hydrilla right now. Uh, you want to keep a top water handy for the school fish, but the best way to catch them is to cast a, a 10 inch worm Texas rig down on the edge of that grass where it's scattered. Uh, a lot of fish on that scattered edge. Uh, if you want to throw a deep crankbait out there, you can also pick up pick up the fish. If you want to fish deeper, there's fish rock-related fish out in that 20 to 30 foot range. Chase those with a drop shot or a, a football jig or a flutter spoon. Moving way on down south, the Falcon. Uh, you know, this summer's probably my favorite time down there. You can catch a really quality fish 
uh, all summer long. Right now, on the upper to the mid end of the lake, you want to crank the rock houses. Uh, those will be very variable depths, you know, from, from a 1.5 square bill all the way to a, you know, out that 12 or 15 foot range where you're throwing a bigger crankbait. Chartreuse patterns are the key there on your crankbaits. Uh, moving down the lake from the mid lake to the lower end of fish are related to the to the rock humps and ledges. Uh, you know, that's probably the best way to catch you a giant down there right now. Get you a football jig or a heavy stand-up head with a 11 inch worm on it or a big crankbait, uh, that, and you may catch a fish of a lifetime. Don't let the heat keep you away. That's some of the best big fish time frame we've got down there. Uh, got a picture of a bass here. Uh, that's from Lake Decker with, with Brian Cotter and his customers the other day. Always fun to see a little kid with a big bass. Uh, you're absolutely right. Tell us about the hybrids, bub. All right, Lake Somerville, the whites and hybrids are schooling like crazy on the lower end. Uh, look for surface activity, throw top water spoons or crankbaits at them when they're doing that. Can't see them, you know. Uh, use your low rest electronics and find the school of the shed and the fish will be related with them. One thing you want to do also, on any before any fishing trip right now, you want to have you some prosex jerky or you know, even dried sausage. Uh, whatever you want, they've got it at, at Prosex Smokehouse. Go to projects.com you can order it online and have it shipped to you all right thank you so much matt for that we're going to go ahead and take a look at the lower fresh region hot spots he says falcon lake can't beat it bass are biting very well throw chartreuse pattern crankbaits at the upper to, to the mid lake house rock piles and then throw football jigs and crankbaits on the lower lake rock humps and ledges don't forget the difference between a rock pile and a hump absolutely you can't forget that all right oh, let's say imagine. hi to our middle coast region <laughs> captain bink grimes bink what's going on for the weekend oh man august is here and, and traditionally it comes with a lot of calm days it's getting calm this week uh perfect weather to get out there on the in the surf but middle of july man it gave us a lot a lot of days in the surf and it was really really impressive to see the the number of lar large trout roaming the the first and second guts. We threw, we threw pink and bone she dogs and the red and white top dogs. They were, they got crushed in the first gut at first light. Then later in the day, as the tide fell, uh, those fish kind of stays on the edge of the second bar, and we we picked them off uh, with those top waters. Large shrimps and, and scores of pogies and mullet are right on the beach, and those big trout shadowed those rafts of bait. Uh, if you see a shrimp bound to the surface, uh, you know make a precise cast and you get a fish on. Uh, there's no reason this week shouldn't be any different. We're, we're calling for uh, five to 10 for the next uh, four to five days. And man, we're, we're pretty excited about it. In Port O'Connor, deep guts around Pascabal have had the best trout for, uh, you know, that Port O'Connor area, the old, old Coast Guard station, the Army Hole uh, have been good. There's a lot of trout tight to the rocks at the jetty uh, on live shrimp and mirror lures. And some guys are walking the rocks at sunrise and throwing top waters for larger trout. Tides are a little low, and uh, uh, so we've been working, you know, East Bay, uh, the cuts and guts and on the North Shore line have been good. Uh, Bay's been off colored at times, but then it clears about mid morning as the uh, as the wind subsides. And uh, we've, we've been working, you know, with live shrimp uh, as the tide comes in. Uh, we've been intercepting them on, uh, in the cut. Uh, wading with Little John and uh, Bass Bass and Sea Shad uh, in the Red Shad, Chicken on a Chain and Glow Chartreuse Colors. Uh, those fish are staging out there in that intercoastal 15 to 25 foot of water where all the barge ship traffic is and then they come through the cut and, uh, and on that incoming tide we're just bouncing them on the bottom there as they come through on that incoming tide. In Freeport, the jetty's been best for, uh, for trout on live shrimp. Many of the bays around there are two foot below normal. Uh, and, and the mouths of the bows around San Luis Pass are holding lots of trout uh, as that tide comes in. It's basically, you know, when you got low tide, you kind of try to fish that same winter pattern because we have low tides during the winter as well. And the surf in Port uh, Aransas has been really good. Green to the beach, top waters like your sheep up, she dogs uh, have been great. And then the live bait has been throwing finger mullet and croaker at them. Redfish, uh, with the tides the lowest, man, those, those redfish are are falling out in the middle of East Bay. They do it every time this year, uh, every time uh, this time of the year. Uh, we caught them today doing the same thing. Good catches have come around Mitchell's Cut and Sargent, uh, tossing pogies. Uh, anglers uh, 
They're casting that in the pogies and cutting them up and Carolina rigging them on a kale hook. Uh, the same's playing out the Matagorda Jetty. Incoming tide's been best, those slot size reds, along with bull reds, are roaming the rocks there. Large table shrimp getting it done. Uh, there's a lot of shrimp, you know, in the, in the in the Gulf right now. The North Shoreline East Bay is holding reds as well. Those reefs are separating the ICW and the bay. And most of those people are power pulling down for them uh, on the edge of the drops and, and, and throwing a live shrimp or a mullet in there. Schools of reds are, are circling in the middle of the bay. Uh, those same areas we drift for trout, we're catching reds on, on live shrimp and then my shrimp imitations under uh, mid-coast corks. Uh, making long drifts and you'll just hit, you'll hit a school of them and everybody's rod will be bent. Did that today too. And a lot of them are, uh, are oversized. So make sure, you know, uh, if they're over 28 inches to tag them. We'll go offshore, uh, got Michael Quebeca and Matagorda said those sort fish are good on the hilltop at 1400 to 1800 foot of water. There's a lot of shrimp boats in the Gulf and they're, uh, and those, uh, when they're culling those uh, shrimp boats, those, Kobe and Tuna Dorado are right there. They're catching them uh, doing that. Wahoo are all over the weed lines, as are Dorado and Triple Tail. Red snapper action remains great, 40 to 80 foot of water. Our recent mermaid tournament this weekend was a ladies tournament. It was one with a, uh, a 43 pound King, a 14 pound Dorado, and a 22 pound Kobe. You got to catch all of them. And uh, that team beat the, the next team by, by uh, 50 pounds, <laughs> kind of kind of did it up on them. And then again, the tarpon's been showing off the beach. Our August is perfect for tarpon here in Matagorda. It only gets better. We're gonna look for them this weekend. We're hoping to get out on that gulf. It's supposed to be seas one to two feet. And we're pretty excited because you got tarpon, trout, and everything offshore in our gulf right now. All right, bud, thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the CCA hotspots from the Middle Coast region. He says, inshore, trout. Work the guts and ledges next to the channel on the incoming tide. Spots like Bogey's Cut in the East Matagorda Bay. And what's this, Bree Survala? Bayou in Port O'Connor are good so spots yeah. in Bass Assassins. Down south, lures and live croakers and then offshore. Wahoos. Uh, lots of them are holding on the weed lines on mullet, squid, and sand trout. All right, speaking of CCA Texas, just because we're on the back end of summer doesn't mean that you can't still enter and win Come in on. the CCA Texas Star Tournament. California resident Fernando Gutierrez was in Texas for two weeks just the other day when he read an article about a previous star winner in Lone Star Outdoor News. That article saved him a lot of heartache as he soon became the third Ford Truck Haney Boat Coastline Trailer and Mercury Motor Package wow. winner. So there's hope for everyone. Go get registered at startournament.org. That's just Dang, awesome. That Enter so the awesome. lottery, man. I, I think so. It. I All love right, it. start getting your gear together because we're headed to That's the Star awesome. Middle Fresh region next here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. And we're seeing what Dave Farrell is showcasing over at the CCA Workbench for new products. Dave, something pretty. Give it well, to us. Well, I don't know how pretty squids are, but these are pretty neat anyway. We got that. They're just pretty neat. We got some squid dredge baits. Those and are pretty. A way to fish from a drone. Those are pretty. I'd bite them. We'll be back. Fishing Ooh. from a drone. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yeti, built for the wild. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Building conservation trust. CCA's National Habitat Program and StarTron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you can either stay busy fishing or get busy catching. From Texas to Tampa Bay or Key West to the Carolinas and beyond. For nearly 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Ask for Fish Bites and Fish Bites Fight Club lures by name or visit fishbites.com. 
Over 40 years ago, Mr. Proshek began smoking meat in a little Texas town called Hilji, combining fresh, grade-A ingredients to create a variety of legendary smoked meats. Today, Proshek's Smokehouse is a Texas tradition, and now Proshek's not only satisfies hunger in Texas, but across the country. Visit Proshek's.com and order everything from fresh meats to your choice of jerky. Proshek's meats are made by Proshek's, sold by Proshek's, and can be delivered in as little as a day. Proshek's Smokehouse, a link above. CCA Workbench, and it's time to talk about new products, eh, yep. Dave? Well, first off, we're going to talk about Blue Water Gear, and as you can see, I'm decked out in Blue Water Gear. I got a really nice, deep, beautiful, clean hat and really nice shirts that I'm going to be wearing for on the tech on the Texas show for the rest of the year. Thank you, Blue Water Gear. But what, you know, what's really cool about this company is they're really uh, passionate about the ocean. Ten percent of their sales go to Mo Marine Laboratory. Nice. So you know they're they're helping out. And uh, which you know we all want people to do. What uh, really cool here is we've got the Sailfish 2.0 uh, uh, Indigo shirt, which is 60/40 poly cotton, which I really love that blend. And anybody who makes them, actually, that 60/40 cotton blend, that's a beautiful thing, poly cotton, because it's really soft, really lightweight. You don't even feel the thing on there. Um, just super soft, uh, side seam, and really lightweight. Um, plus, we've got the, the from this is just the regular T-shirts. They also have tech shirts. This is the gray shield shirts, UPF 50. Uh, again, it's got all the moisture wicking, uh, spandex poly blend, ultra lightweight shirt again, so you can stay dry, stay dry technology, great for going out on the water. Uh, they just make really, really nice stuff. Cool and here's, stuff. Here's another one that's called the Patriot, another regular t-shirt like the one I'm wearing yep. with the same kind of material. Just as you can see how it, it falls, it's just very, very very soft and yeah. comfortable. It's something you want to have on your skin. Correct. Right? I, I like, like it. it. I like it a lot. <clears throat> Next, we've got the Soft Science. These are the Fin H2O slip-ons, and you know these are really great for if you're gonna you know be in the back of the boat and you want to uh, wire a fish or whatever and just slip a few uh, pair of uh, slippers on. If you're not used to wearing shoes or whatever, I would wear these to the airport because I like to put my shoes on and off easy at the airport right. instead of messing with my Old Converse. Aces. Correct, but anyway, these have the uh, the quick dry draining uh, upper mesh. You know, the upper is all made out of mesh. They have the ne neoprene uh, cut out there that gives you a really good secure fit. The insole comes out. It's the Trilon Trilon uh, insole comes out. You can wash it. Uh, really you can wash the shoes separately. You can too. wash the shoes as well. Very, very mm. light, comfortable, non-marking, non-skidding shoes. Great to have in the cockpit for wiring a fish, gaffing a fish, just Correct. like we talked about the rigs and techniques. Correct. All right, what else, Dave? Next, we have the Sky Rigger right here, which is uh, made by Sea Ulcer. And what this thing does is it allows you to use your drone to to fish with. You can, you can, it's a release clip that you can put your line in, and then once you put your line in there, I can't see it from here, there put you your go. line in, clip it off, and then the drone flies your line and your bait and or lure, you can use a bait or a lure, the guy, you get a, you get a nice shadow box, and he can, he can see the tarpon or the redfish or whatever it is way better than you can. He gets that drone up, you know, a little ways and puts about 30 feet of leader out and, and gets right over the top of the fish and drops the bait. Drops either, he can either, you can either click it off and let it fall or he can just lower it down and keep it right on the surface like a kite. 30, wow. 30 feet above the school and we have some tremendous bites, you wouldn't believe, of fish coming and eating live baits right off the surface 
Wow. Out from under the drone. Next we have, these are from Squid Nation. These are called Thin Skins. And, you know, they teamed up with the same Captain Bruce up there that did the Otter Tails. And what these are, great dredge baits. They're incredibly lightweight. You can put a 60 dredge, 60 of these baits on a dredge and it won't collapse it because they're so light and they're almost indestructible. They come in the two, two squids there, the real squid and then the shell squid. They're UV enhanced. The incredible tail action. These things swim like you would not believe when they're on that dredge. And I wouldn't doubt it. You know, they got two holes there. It'd be a great pitch bait as well. If you wanted to pitch one of those things, when they come up on that same dredge and you pitch that same little thing, it would collapse and go right down a blue marlin's mouth. <laughs> Easy. Easy. He's a good salesman, isn't he, Bree? I like it. Absolutely. That's got why a we hired good him. Tonight. All right, let's, really good job. Let's check in with our Star Tron Middle Fresh Region guide, Matt Losher, and see what the bite is like on Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, and Richland Chambers and Lake Livingston. Give us your best, Matt. All right, Bree. Yeah, I'm going to give you a, a hot report from the Middle Fresh Region this week. Uh, I'm going to start off on Toledo Bend because it's been pretty good um, on the largemouth bass. Uh, the bite requires a little bit of patience and attention to detail, but right now I'm finding some of the best schools of fish that I've found since May. Uh, however, like I said, it is late summer and they're you know a bit finicky right now. They've been beat on all year, um, but you can experience some great fishing right now if you're willing to just kind of force feed them a little bit. They really just don't want to bite. Um, so the key is to just entice them, you know, make them make them make your uh, presentation irresistible, I guess. So be very patient and precise with your cast and try different spots at different times of the day uh, and just be as stealthy as possible because at some point during the day, these fish are going to bite. And if you're around when, when they decide to feed, it can be just as good as some other times of the year. It's just that, you know, we're kind of that late summer funk, so you got to work with them a bit. Uh, when you know you're around them, drag that worm extra slow through the school of fish. I'm finding them right now in about 10 to 20 foot of water on tapered drop-offs. Bait is very key. They're relating to the shad right now, so look for areas that have a lot of shad. Uh, I've had the best success lately catching them on a Carolina rig bass assassin fat job and the bass assassin tap out worm rigged on a shaky head. Uh, red bug and blueberry have been my two best colors. And uh, this week we actually got to host our fourth annual youth bass fishing summer camp at living the dream guide service and the kids got to catch some real nice fish so to end the toledo bin report i'm going to throw a photo up of uh, one of our campers blaine holding a real nice bass first one he ever caught on a carolina rig on that bass assassin fat job uh good first fish to catch on a new technique there all right what you got i'm going to move over to uh yeah i'm going to jump over to sam rayburn um we also got to fish one day over there this week with our bass campers and we found a lot of fish still hanging out shallow, surprisingly. Uh, the water level continues to fall over there pretty quickly, but there's still a lot of shad up on the edge of the hay grass. And our best bite was around that hay grass and cypress trees, once again on the bass assassin fat job. Just that, that subtle action right now, that bait is, is getting the bite. Uh, there's also a lot of fish spooling on the river right now. So if you get out there on a calm day, make sure you have a topwater plug rigged up because they can pop up anytime chasing shad on the surface. Then next, uh, up on Richland Chambers, Mr. Thurman Selman with Bass Specialty Guide Service is catching bass in the mornings early really well. He told me this week he had a client catching fish every cast up around the reeds, uh, fishing a creature bait and a jig. And then he says that you can still catch some fish on the docks and the points as well, using a square bill cream bait or a creature bait later in the day. And then on the crappie, uh, they haven't been biting quite as well as we'd like them to, but we've still been catching some good fish and uh, enough numbers to keep things interesting. Most days on the way have been right now, we're bringing in 30 to 60 fish of, you know, good quality size slabs and quite a few, you know, we're catching a few uh, throwbacks as well. So there's a lot of action and a nice mess of fish at the end of the day. Key to catching them is just to keep moving, a few here and a few there. Live minnows and that fanfish assassin monkey milk uh, jig are the ticket for hooking up on those. You're going to catch them in about 8 to 15 foot down uh, in the timber over about 15 to 30 foot water depth. Um, try that, you should be able to catch a nice mess. The white bass, uh, they're biting pretty good on Lake Livingston uh, on white spoons and then on Toledo Bend on gold and silver spoons really early in the morning and really late in the evening at about 10 to 20 foot of water. And then to close out, I just want to mention that the good old tasty catfish are still biting really well on Toledo Bend. 
The falling water has them ganged up really well in about 15 to 25 foot of water. Drop a minnow all the way down to the bottom, and you shouldn't have to wait long for a tug and a nice mess of fish for dinner. Got a quick question for you, Matt. How's Pearl doing? Matt has the most beautiful little dog named Pearl. How's Pearl? <laughs> She is doing wonderful. We had her out there fishing yesterday, and she is just loving life, being Pearl, just the queen diva. Yeah, queen man, diva. she is one. the diva of that place. That fish camp place, she just <laughs> runs, the, runs the roost. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Middle Fresh region. He says largemouth bass are biting from the bank to 20 feet on worms and topwater baits. Crappie are biting on minnows and jigs in 15 to 30 feet. The white bass are chasing spoons in the lower light conditions, and the catfish are biting on minnows in 15 to 25 feet of water. He guess we got a hot spot on everything he reported about. Yes, we do, and but not pearl. <laughs> not pearl. I know. We need we need some we need some fish photos. With Did pearl. I say the I'm name sure of this guy when I was on there? This is from yeah. Sea Ulcer. Sea Ulcer. Sea yeah, Ulcer. it's called the Sky That Rigger. is just not fair. What sea Ulcer. I can't believe what, that. What sea Ulcer. Oh, okay. Because he, 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 name. he named it that. It. He named it know, that because in Australia, the they long, they're out there a long time. They get ulcers from being on the well, water too Well, that's smart. Long. Okay, thanks, Rick. Thanks See for tuning in, guys. Have a great weekend. Catch Dr. Fish. Send in your photos. Bye.